Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're here in our game, and things are starting to look pretty good and playable, but there's not a whole lot of risk involved. These spikes aren't very threatening, and this Goomba doesn't do anything. So, today we're going to work on making our enemies actually have an effect on us if we bump into them. But before we get to really working on the enemies, we need to create something like a health bar so that we have something to lose when we do encounter an enemy. So let's get to that. The first thing to do is to create a new sprite for your health bar. I'm going to do this by clicking on my little paintbrush sprite because I want to paint something kind of specific. Now, you can do this by creating anything to represent your health bar. It could be little hearts or little pictures of your character's face. Or to get started, I recommend just doing something like red circles or squares to represent our health. So I'll just pick a red color and a circle. And this is really going to be far from perfect, but again, I just want to get a prototype that is up and running. So I'm going to paint a little red circle, and then I'm going to paint two more next to it. And these three little pellets will represent the maximum amount of health that my character can have. Best case scenario, I have three little hit points. Now you can pick somewhere to put these in your scene. Normally, you would keep this kind of user interface somewhere near the edge of the screen. It could be in a corner, doesn't really matter which one, or it could just be in the top middle or the bottom middle, something like that. For my game, the way that this level is laid out at least, it looks like the bottom right would be the best place because there's kind of some extra space down here where this isn't going to be covering up my doorway or my power up or a dangerous thing like the spikes. So I'm gonna put it down here where it feels out of the way. You can pick your placement by whatever works well in your level. And while this might look something like a health bar, it doesn't have any kind of function yet. So what we're going to be doing is when we take damage or get healed, we're going to be turning versions of this sprite on and off so that we have more or less health. So let's go look at the costumes. Right now, we just have costume one where we see our three red dots for a full health bar. I'm going to control click this costume and rename it first. And I'm going to call it HP for hit points and three. So this is what our health bar will look like when we have three hit points. Now I'm going to control click and duplicate this. I'm going to rename this one HP2, and then I'm going to control click it and edit it. And then I'm simply going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to completely erase the far right dot. Now you can see that this tool set is, you know, not exactly a professional setup. It can be a little bit tedious working with it, but to make something quick and simple, this will very much do the job. I've seen people do fantastic things with their health bars using things like Piscal or Photoshop to animate a little version of their character or something else that represents the health and have it kind of bouncing around or flow up and down. There's a lot of ways that you can take something simple like a health bar and make it more interesting and exciting. But we're not worried about that right now. We're just going to get it functioning. So I'll hit OK right here. And now you can see an example of when I've lost one of my little health dots. So here we just repeat the process. Control click and duplicate. On the duplicate, we will rename it as HP1 and hit OK. And then control click and edit eraser tool and OK. And I was working quickly. It actually looks like I missed a little red dot or two, but it's so small. I don't think anyone will ever notice. I'm going to roll with it. So now we've got three, two, and one pieces of health represented. And if you need it, it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and paint a new costume. And then I'm going to hit OK after painting nothing. And well, we see nothing at all, which is actually kind of useful sometimes. I'll just rename this one to HP zero. And this is a really easy way that we can do an interactive health bar that's going to change every time we take damage or get healed. We can turn these off or on as we need. Now, before we get to putting any code on the enemies, which we'll do in just a moment, we need to put some code on the health bar itself. So let's switch from the health bar's costumes over to its scripts. We'll start off as we often do by going to control and bringing in a when green flag clicked, meaning when we start the game, and we're gonna go immediately to a forever loop because we want to be constantly checking to see if we're taking damage and if we need to change our health bar. We don't want there to be any delay between getting hit and losing a point of health or grabbing a power up and getting some health back. The change should be instantaneous, so we need to check forever, all the time. We're going to do this with a series of if statements, but we'll just bring out one to get started with and we'll end up doing a lot of copying and pasting as we go along here. Now, we're going to need a variable to keep track of our life. 
You can name this variable any way you want, but make sure that you know what it does. So I'm going to go over to my variables category and click on make a variable. And then I'll just type in something like life count and hit OK. I've got my new life count variable right here. I might leave that up just for now as we're testing this. And then I need to compare my life count. I'll just drag this out here for a second while I go over to my operators and bring out an equals operator. And I'm simply going to say that if my life count is equal to something, then it's going to display a specific sprite or a specific costume for my health bar. So if my life count is equal to three, it follows that I should go into looks and switch costumes to, I'll pick from my list, HP3. Pretty straightforward, I think. So now I'll control click right on this if block and I will duplicate it and attach it down here. And you can probably guess what comes next. We need to do one of these for each possibility. So if our life count is equal to two, then we use HP2 and duplicate and attach that right below. And I almost had that attached in the wrong place. I don't want it to be attached to the purple. I want it to be attached to the previous if statement. So a bunch of if statements outside of each other, but inside of the forever. So now if my life count is equal to one, then we show HP one and, and as you've probably guessed, one more for if my life count is equal to zero, then we will switch to costume HP zero. So the health bar knows what to do if the life count changes, but now we need code that actually tells that life count variable when to go up or at the moment down. It's also probably a good idea to initialize this life count variable. So let's just go up and bring out a set from our variables category and put this right up above the forever here. And let's just set life count to three. So when we start the game, we will always have three life at the beginning. But now we need to program something that will take this life away, something that will do damage to the player. And that code will be going on our spikes and our little Goomba here. So next, let's go ahead and take a look at our enemies. I'm going to start with Sprite 13. That's this little pack of spikes right here. And this is actually going to work similar to when we determine whether or not we're falling. The ground figures out whether or not it's touching the player, and then it tells the player to stop falling. In this case, the spikes, Sprite 13 here, we're going to bring out a blank when block in our control because we want our enemies and our spikes here to be able to sense when they are touching something. So we bring out this sensing touching block and change it to player. So it can detect when it's touching the player is going to do a thing. The thing that it's going to do is it is going to not set, but change, change our life count by negative one. And that is on this set of spikes right here. So let's go test it out. All right, we landed on the spikes and you can see it took away our life, all of it, almost instantaneously. So the good news is that this is working. The bad news is it feels a little bit too punishing. In most games like this, when you take damage, you get at least a second or two to recover. Oftentimes there's a little animation where your character is flashing a little bit, letting you know that you've got a little bit of time before you have to get to safety and make sure that you don't take damage again. So let's make our game feel a little more fun and fair by doing something like that. So I'll just bring out a wait two seconds here. And let's try it again. All right, so now we've hit the spikes but it waits two seconds before it will trigger the damage again. So you can see it's not as punishing. We can land on the spikes and still have time to recover before we've lost all of our health. And eventually we'll set this up so that when our health bar runs out, that ends the game. But for right now, those spikes are working pretty well. And the good news from here is once you've done it to one set of spikes, you can do this to anything that you want to be an enemy in the game. We already have it on Sprite 13. It's not showing up on any of the other spikes yet, and it's certainly not on enemy one. So let's go ahead and just go control, duplicate, and let's attach it to the rest of our spikes, as well as our Goomba. So now all of our spikes are doing damage, as well as our Goomba. Just a couple more things you can do this week. One is our enemy, or in this case, our Goomba. We're supposed to have both stationary enemies, our spikes, and moving enemies. In my case, our little Goomba example here. If I want this guy to move around a little bit, 
and make this platform up here a little bit more dangerous, there's a bunch of ways that you can get your enemies moving throughout the game world. But here's a really easy one that we've all seen used before in real games. We'll just have this guy patrolling back and forth. So let's, on our Goomba, quickly go to the motion category, and let's move him all the way to the left, and let's bring out a glide. And let's take a look at his current X position and his current Y position. I'll just put these both on screen for a minute here. All right, so let's say we want him to constantly patrol between the left side of this platform and the right side of this platform. No matter what, he's gonna go back and forth between these two places. So I can just put in his current coordinates. So X, positive 116, and Y, positive 36. And then if I want him to go over to the other side of this platform a little bit later, I'll just duplicate this here real quick. And I'm going to keep the 36 because that will prevent him from moving up and down. I just want him moving straight left and right in this example. If you want characters that move up and down all over the screen, by all means, play around with that Y. But I want him to just patrol left and right on this platform, no vertical movement. So now his X position is 297, and I'll change that while leaving the Y alone. And I can just put this in a really basic, when we start the game, we will do this forever. And there's a lot of ways that you could tweak the difficulty on this. So right now, he's just constantly patrolling left and right. He's moving pretty quick. That could actually be pretty challenging for the player to deal with. If you think it's a little too hard, well, first thing you could do is you could slow down his glide so he's not moving as fast. You could also have it wait at one point or another during this. So we could go to our control category here, and we could just put a wait one second in after each of these. Now he'll get to one side, wait for just a second. Get to the other side and wait for a second. This gives the player a lot more opportunity to play around the character's behavior. So for a first level enemy, I think that's pretty good. You can see I also touched the enemy while I was jumping there and I bumped into him. That could be something where you're okay with that level of challenge. Or if that feels unfair, you might move the platform and the enemy up a little bit to make that jump easier to make. So I have enemies in the game. Some are moving, some are stationary. All do damage to my health bar, which is in the game as well. I'm just going to clean up my screen a little by turning off the X and Y position. And we're looking pretty good. One more real quick thing, you could probably figure this out for yourselves, but if you wanted to make some kind of a power-up, it would be really easy to do with our health bar here now. If you wanted to make something that gives you life, um, let's say a little health potion. Let's paint a new sprite for this. Quick and ugly but effective. We'll make it look pretty later if we like the way that it's working. All right, I'm going to imagine this is a little bottle with a little neck on it to get real fancy here and put a little cork up top. All right, this is my little health potion power-up that I'm going to put up here. So this will give me back one point of health when I bump into it. That's my plan here. So let's just go to the scripts real quick. And let's say that when it senses that it is touching the player, it will, we'll go use a variable, we will change our life count by positive one this time. Now, of course, just like the enemy, the way this is right now, if I were to stand on this little potion, my health would go up, 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 up. Now, there's mechanics like this in games. Um, instead of a potion, maybe it's like a healing fountain, and when you stand in the fountain, the water heals you constantly. So if you like the mechanic like that, you could let it work like that. If you want it to work more like a consumable item, where once you touch it, it heals you and then it goes away, I should do something like I did with my health bar. I'll go to costumes, I'll go to paint a new costume, and I'll just click OK without painting anything at all. If I wanted to make this easier to understand while I'm coding it, I could do something like rename these potion, and I'll rename the empty one no potion. And now in my scripts, when touching player, we will change life count by one, and then we will switch to costume, no potion. We should also then initialize this so that when the game is started, we are sure that we switch to the costume where we do have the potion. So we see the potion. We take some damage on the way to the potion. 
We land on it, it gives us one little tick of health, and then it disappears. So there you have it, a working health bar and enemies, a moving enemy, and a really basic little health power-up. So that's a lot of small but really important and effective game mechanics to get into your game. Keep in mind, you can take this as far as you want by adding lots of creative different types of power-ups and enemies. So have some fun with it, see what you can pull off, and make sure that yours functions at least as well as mine. Next time, we'll make sure that you can grab the key and open the door to win the level, or if you take too much damage before achieving your goal, you'll get a game over screen. And before you know it, you'll have completed your very own 2D platforming game. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, so be sure to share all the progress you make this week in the comments on Schoology. All right, everybody, good luck and have fun.